So the basic idea is is this, uh, for those of you, I don't think there is anybody, but just in case, no, nah, there's nobody that's going to be. Uh, in fact, I'll probably, given who's here, I'll probably skip over this unless anybody seriously uh, wants me to go over this again. Um, I think this is one area that you're probably all familiar with. Uh, if, if Responder bids one no Trump, um, then whether uh, opener bids a new suit at the two level or rebids their opening major, there are at least two unbid suits by definition. And so the cheapest one of those is Gamma in opener's first major. And if they've shown a second suit, uh, the second cheapest relay is uh, Gamma in their second suit with a special uh, scale if it's a three card, potentially three card minor that they've bid. If the uh, opener hasn't bid a second suit, then uh, the second cheapest new relay is beta. Um, okay, does anybody have any questions about the relay gammas over for forcing no trump? I don't intend to spend any more time on it given that we don't have anybody who's relatively new to the system here I think uh, everybody here is um, uh, almost certainly into that enough if anybody's got any uh, doubts or queries about this just shout up before I move on um, but I said I don't want to waste time especially since I am dog tired after spending almost the entire day up till midnight last night at uh, the hospital and uh, I've been working since I've been up since six o'clock this morning uh, for work so if we can get finished a bit early I will do Right, I've taken from that everybody's happy with Gamma. In which case, I'm going to move swiftly on. Oops, let's bear with me. Yes, in that case, I'm going to move swiftly on to uh, Exclusion Beta, which I will go over again, if only because it was new this time round. And uh, um, so I think probably you could all do with a quick reminder of how that works. So the old approach to splinters of double jump shifts in the suit below our shortage have completely gone now. In its place, uh, we have something called exclusion beta. Um, and in practice, this is used normally on about 11 to 13 responding hands, not much stronger than that because these are hands that have extreme distribution and good trump support and fairly decent controls and the the number of hands that will actually qualify for exclusion beta is actually surprisingly small um, I'll give you an example in a minute uh, if they're much stronger because of their extreme distribution if they're much stronger than about 13 high card points almost certainly you're going to be better off going via forcing no trump and gamma um, these are hands where you need basically a perfect fit with opener to get to a small or even a grand slam and you need to have opener having good controls at least four and in specific places that don't include your void suit. So more on that in a minute.
So the first difference with exclusion beta is that we're now bidding our short suit itself. We're no longer bidding the suit below. The idea of splinters in the suit below was that we were inviting opener to muse beta in the short suit. But with exclusion beta, it's responder themselves who are taking the initiative. So they are taking the, the captaincy of the hand by the scruff of the neck because they're showing the void. But that double jump shift in a new suit is uh, itself beta using the strong beta scale. In other words, we're using the 0 to 4 scale even though opener has uh, made an intermediate opening. Not because we think responder is going to be, sorry, opener is going to be strong in controls, but because the sort of hand that responder is going to have is where they need responder to be A, good in controls, and B, with the controls in the right places. These really are aimed at finding magic fit slams on sub-minimum values. If you've got a hand that doesn't qualify, you simply go via the forcing no trump gamma. And you've always got that option. But there are some hands where actually this will work better. Um, if there's lots of potential options as to where opener might have their controls, uh, sometimes this is going to be a cheaper alternative um, by effectively you're only going to proceed to a slam if opener shows um, five or more controls. If four controls would be enough then the chances are you should be using the forcing no trump gamma sequences. So the second way it works, besides using the strong control, is that we're excluding any controls in the exclusion suit. In other words, diamonds in that example. So if opener has the ace-king of diamonds, opposite our void, it's unlikely that they have as many as four controls outside it, and it's impossible for them to have five controls outside of diamonds. And that's one of the reasons why we put the bar fairly high by using the 0 to 4, 5, 6, 7 strong beta scale. Any questions so far? Okay, so here's so here's a, a fairly simple example. So Responder's got uh, Queen Jack to five spades, King Queen to six hearts, a Void Diamond, and King X in uh, in clubs. Not an enormously powerful hand, but if Opener's got good controls in the right places, we could easily have a small slam, if not a grand slam, on here. So if Partner opens one spade, we would now bid four diamonds. And uh, we'll find out, as I've said there, we'll find out if Fart has enough controls outside of diamonds for us to make a small slam. So if they show 0 to 4 controls, um, then we could well be missing two aces, for the sake of example. Two aces outside of diamonds.
and we're certainly missing an ace and the king of spades potentially or two aces because we're only interested in controls other than diamond controls if however opener shows five controls in response to our, our strong beta exclusion beta bid now we know they must have the king of spades and two of our missing aces and it doesn't really matter it might matter with clubs if they've got the ace of hearts and the ace king of spades but uh, if they uh, that that would just be a matter of luck if uh, I think if we if we knew that we were missing the ace of clubs I think we would probably go for a small slam and take a chance on it and bear in mind as I've, I'm going to say in a minute that exclusion beta automatically agrees the suitors trumps the opening major is trumps and of course because we've used beta Epsilons are going to be available afterwards because exclusion beta is definitely slam invitational Okay, so If opener has six controls if we have five controls We almost certainly want to be in uh, a small slam even if it turns out that clubs is going to be a 50-50 guess, but it's going to need an opening club lead for that to be a problem. If opener has six controls, we know they've got R3 missing aces and we're missing the king of spades. And similarly, we're going to end up in six. However, if opener by any chance shows seven controls, we'll know that we've got a grand slam here because we know they've got the ace of clubs the ace of hearts and the ace king of spades and that's all they've got okay any uh, any questions so far okay the other kind of exclusion beta is uh, slightly different. Now we bid a forcing no trump first and then jump shift into a new suit over opener's rebid. Okay, the, the critical difference here is that now we are showing a similar sort of hand to the one that I've just explained same sort of thing uh, but now we're showing a singleton in the suit that we bid and we are only excluding the king of that suit we're quite happy for opener to show the ace of that suit as a control and to include it in their number of controls but not the king So here we, we bid one no trump first and then over openers rebid we jump shift into our singleton. And if you think back on the normal uh, one no trump sequences, um, there's no there's nothing that's potentially going to conflict with that. We would that's something that we would never do other than using it for exclusion beta. So again this kind of sequence where we bid one no jump first and then jump shift it's not a double jump shift just a single jump shift into our singleton um, tells opener to, to count the ace of that suit but not the king I think I've got a quick example of that
Okay, so here we've got a singleton spade, five hearts to the king, king queen jack to five diamonds, and a sex in clubs. Nice enough hand, and you could quite happily go via relay beta potentially, but you've got quite a few epsilons that you might need to use in order to nail down exactly where openers' controls are. Whereas exclusion beta is going to tell you almost immediately whether opener has the stuff in the right places uh, for us to be able to make six. So over one heart, we're going to bid one no trump. Opener is going to rebid something. And now we're going to jump to the three level in spades uh, to show our singleton spade. And again, we're asking four controls using the strong, the strong beta scale as before. But now it's okay for open to include the ace of spades because we've got a singleton there, but not the king. We're not interested in the king of spades. Um, yes, it might be useful if partner doesn't have any help in clubs. Um, and this is maybe not a fantastic example um, for exclusion beta with a singleton, um, but it serves to show the mechanism. Um, so here, uh, again, six controls with opener is going to be enough for us to bid a small slam. Um, sorry, five controls for a small slam, and six is probably going to be enough for a grand. Um, to some extent, it's going to depend on how many diamonds partner has and how many clubs they have if, if a partner has six controls. Because if they, had, if they do have six controls, uh, not including the king of spades, then they have to have the three missing aces. And we've got time to make an epsilon in diamonds and or clubs um, just to get some idea as to whether the discards we're expecting in diamonds is actually going to work. Okay, so exclusion beta does give rise to epsilons because we've strongly agreed a major, we've shown an interest in slam, we've, we've got... Uh, a decent idea as to how many controls partner has and so if they show naught to four controls the chances are we're going to sign off um, in the agreed major at the cheapest level but if they show five or more the likelihood is we're going to be bidding a small or a grand slam but the way is open there for us to use epsilons if we need to just nail down some other little detail. Okay, any questions about exclusion beta before we move on? I do have one example hand here. I think, I don't think I've got more than one. No, I think I've only got the one. But it'll do to serve uh, as an example. Maybe it'd be better if I uh, just bear with me a minute. You can all just have a quick look at that hand while I actually log in, as I should have done to start with. Okay. So here, East is going to open one spade. So this is a pretty good example for uh, exclusion beta with West. Um, again, they're very often going to be the sort of hands with five, hard, five card or six card support for openers major and another long suit 
and a void. Um, so this is a fairly typical example. So here, West is going to bid four clubs. So that's exclusion beta, shows the void in clubs. Um, but it's beta using the strong scale. And it tells East to ignore any controls that they do have in clubs. So here, uh, East, by some miracle, happens not to have any controls in clubs. And they do have a minimum hand, but with five controls. So here it's going to be uh, four hearts showing five controls. And so what does that mean to, uh, to West? East must have the ace of spades. Um, they've got to have the king of hearts and they've got to have the ace of diamonds. Because that's the only controls outside of clubs that they can have. Um, so what else might uh, West want to know? Um, they don't have the option here of a, a sort of gamma in heart in spades rather to make sure of the uh, the queen of spades. So we're just going to take a chance on that. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to go via the forcing no trump gamma sequence. Um, so really, there's only one thing. West is at this stage is going to be totally happy to bid to uh, six spades, but that gives them room for a quick epsilon in hearts because really the only danger here is that East might have King XX in hearts, which would potentially give us a heart loser. So four step response over five hearts shows second and third round control. So now West knows that East has got either King X in hearts or King Queen X or Stiff King Queen. Either way, uh, we're now totally happy. A confidently bid Grand Slam on a combined... 22 count is pretty good going and okay it's a perfect fit but that's what exclusion beta is designed to try and find it doesn't matter what fillers east might have in spades or diamonds or anything else what we need to find out about because of this extreme distribution in the west hand is whether East has got the controls in the right place. They either have or they haven't. The only disadvantage to using exclusion feature on this hand is that we've pretty much gone for broke looking for a grand slam. And of course there are plenty of uh, possibilities for making a small slam which we might not find given that we use exclusion beta. So actually, on this hand, although you can use exclusion beta and it works very nicely here and the example bidding has shown um, how this would go, in practice, with that west hand, I think I would be bidding one no trump, uh, east would be rebidding two clubs, and I would then just bid two diamonds, and I would just go that route. Uh, because there's plenty of opportunities for a small slam, uh, which you will find that way, whereas exclusion beta, you're either just going to have to punt six or um, 
take a chance depending on what he shows. Okay, any questions about exclusion beta before we move on? You're all very quiet tonight. Okay. Next up is uh, one no trump. Okay, so obviously a jump shift over a one no trump opening is alpha in the suit bid. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, those are fairly easy because they're um, they're just taking the, the hand by the scruff of the neck and launching straight into an asking bid sequence. Um, assuming that responder isn't a past hand. But there are two portals for ETA over one no trump. Uh, and these are when we've used stamen. So if it goes one no trump, two clubs and opener shows uh, a major at the two level. These aren't available if opener bids a major at the three level over two clubs. But on the other hand, now you know that they're either maximum or minimum, depending on which exact sequence we've used. Um, and uh, so you've got options of just using beta and, and Q bidding that way in the knowledge that they are either maximum or minimum. But when they bid two of a major over one no trump two clubs, uh, you don't necessarily have any indication as to their range. Um, and and because we've got the extra space when they rebid the major at the two level, um, if we now bid the other major at the three level, it is e eta in the major that opener has shown. So one no trump, two clubs, two hearts, three spades is eta in hearts. And one no trump, two clubs, two spades, three hearts is eta in spades. Okay, so Eater automatically agrees responders major as trumps. Um, and because we've now got an established asking bid sequence, relay beta applies. And uh, epsilons are available as well. Just for your information, there has been a discussion recently in the discussion forum about dispensing with short beta over hands where we've shown a 4441. Clearly, these sequences don't show a 4441, and in any case, we, I think, have pretty much decided to leave that situation as it is for now. Uh, so in 4441 sequences where we've used ETA, then uh, if we know where the singleton is, if the beta response, sorry, the ETA response is the suit below the shortage, the known shortage, or the suit below that, we keep short beta in the singleton suit, but otherwise we forget short beta and rely on relay beta instead. Uh, and that situation isn't going to change, I don't think. Okay, any questions uh, on ETA 
after one no Trump and a, a Stamen two clubs. Okay. Um, basically because one no trump, two clubs, two hearts, two spades is something completely different. Charlene. One no trump, two clubs, two hearts, two spades is showing at least an invitational hand with four card spades but not four card hearts and it's forcing to two no trumps or three spades or four spades <laughs> well that's why we jump to three spades over two hearts okay so jump shifts immediately over one diamond or one no trump are uh, alpha, as we've covered before. Um, so these essentially are treated exactly like alpha over a positive response to one club. So the availability of sigma and how uh, sigma works and how repeat sigma works and how we deal with interference um, over the alpha response and, and how uh, Sigma behaves if there is interference is exactly as it is for uh, alpha after a positive response to one club. Okay. Um, I think I have an example of that somewhere if you just bear with me No, I don't. I thought I had. I do apologise. Okay, has anybody got any questions about... Uh, any more questions about... Um, alpha over uh, an intermediate opening of one dime and one no trump or two clubs? Or about eater after stamen? Anybody got any questions? Very good. Okay. Moving on swiftly. Um, because I'm going to get an early night tonight if I can. Um, since I've had about six hours sleep in the last 48 hours. Um, I'm definitely running on fumes tonight. <laughs> okay, so I mentioned two clubs before. And again, alpha over two clubs, an immediate jump shift is just the same as an immediate jump shift over one diamond or one no trump. Uh, but they aren't the only ways that we can get into an asking bid sequence after a two club opener. Um, the first one I'm going to mention is very, very similar to the stamen sequences over one no trump.
Okay, so after one no trump, one no trump, two clubs, two spades, three hearts, and one no trump, two clubs, two hearts, three spades, we're both eater in the major the token was shown. And these are very similar. Where it goes, two diamonds, sorry, two clubs, two diamonds, uh, two hearts or two spades. Then a bid at the three level in the other major is eater in the major that opener has shown. So two clubs, two diamonds, two hearts, three spades is eater in hearts. And two clubs, two diamonds, two spades, three hearts is eater in spades. And as before, uh, we've got an established asking bid sequence. Any, when I say an established asking bid sequence, what I mean is any sequence whatever where we've agreed a trump suit <coughs> either by means of asking bids um, and I mean if it is agreed by means of asking bids then we've always got an, an asking bid sequence agreed and established. Um, but sometimes a bit like with uh, exclusion beta, that doesn't actually use asking bids to agree the trump suit. The exclusion beta bid does agree it, but because we agrees it very strongly, showing very good trump support, and because we've used a high level beta, there are other rules that establish that we now effectively have an established asking bid sequence, and that means that we can use relay beta, exilons, and so on. Okay, um, so those those are the two main portals, or the only portals for ETA over two clubs. However, there are uh, some sequences where we can end up using gamma in clubs. Um, just bear with me a minute. <coughs> Okay, so here's the first one. Uh, if it goes two clubs, two diamonds, uh, and two hearts or two spades, then four clubs is now a length known gamma in clubs because 99 times out of 100, uh, uh, responders length in clubs is known because if they had four six unless they had a void in the other major if they had void four six um, they would have opened three clubs rather than uh, sorry not uh, void in the other major um, void in the other major is the time when they when they might open two clubs rather than three clubs uh, okay, so also over two clubs, two diamonds, three clubs, and two clubs, two diamonds, two no trumps, an immediate bit of four clubs is gamma in clubs. Um, but this time it's not a length known gamma because obviously opener might have uh, um, seven clubs rather than six. Uh, but it does have a six card minimum length because both of those rebids by opener promise at least a six card suit. Okay, any questions so far on two clubs? So the length known gamma scale uh, there are very, very few places, um, and actually even there, it is a matter of partnership agreement really, whether you use the length known gamma scale, or whether you just rely, or just rely on the normal gamma scale, just in case opener does have the uh, 4-3-0-6 or 3 4 0 6 shape hand, which wouldn't open 
three clubs. That's the only 6-4 shape with a major and a minor that doesn't open three clubs. Is where you've got three card support for the other major. So as I've said there, it is a matter of partnership agreement, whether you use length known or length unknown gamma after two clubs, two diamonds, two of a major, four clubs. Um, uh, I'm aware that some partnerships ignore the possibility of 4-3-0-6 or 3-4-0-6. Um, and uh, uh, just use the length known gamma i.e. A, a five card known length um, and some partnerships don't um, so it is a matter of partnership agreement as to which one you do okay that brings us fairly nicely on to three clubs um, I think actually just hang on a minute I do have some examples I can give you of those two clubs eater sequences just bear with me a minute Just hang on a second. Amazing. No, I don't. I'm slipping. Sorry. I, I could have sworn I had an example of that. Um... Right, again, my apologies. Anybody got any questions about uh, the two club sequences before we move on to three clubs? Okay. Okay, so... Over three clubs, the normal route that responder will take is to bid three diamonds to find out which major opener has. Um, but that isn't game forcing. It's not even uh, saying that uh, responder will actually bid over that. It's simply asking opener to, to show which major they have. Um, and, and responder is entitled to pass that bid if they if they see fit. Uh, but consequently, there is no uh, mechanism for asking bids when responder does bid three diamonds. However, um, if responder immediately bids three of one or other major. Now, um, that is expressing a slam interest in that suit. Open the relays in the next bid up. In other words, three clubs, three hearts, three spades, which shows spades, not hearts. And three clubs, three spades, three no chumps, shows hearts, not spades. But if that happens then now an immediate four clubs is gamma in clubs because three clubs three hearts and three clubs three spades are definitely definitely expressing a, a slam interest and uh, so we give access to a gamma in clubs if we need to. Just bear me one minute, sorry.
just getting a a text from Naomi. Okay. So sorry, back to uh, to these sequences. So three clubs, three hearts and three clubs, three spades are showing slam interest in that suit. And actually once we start using the asking bids, they become eater in that suit. So and a bit like some other sequences in OCP where we use ETA in suits where we're not 100% certain whether opener has that suit or not, or partner rather, um, the one step response shows no four card suit in that major, and everything from that upwards is an ETA response. Okay, so before we started using asking bids, it was simply showing slam interest, and we had that relay in the next bid up to deny having a four card holding. Once we do start using asking bids, uh, which is now, that three heart and three spade response to three clubs becomes eater in the suit, using the special scale that has the extra first step response inserted to show no four card holding in the suit. Doesn't promise a shortage necessarily, um, but uh, definitely denies having a four card holding. So over three clubs, three hearts, three spades shows no four card hearts, but three no trumps is an eater response showing four card hearts, but no top honor, and so on and so on and so on. Okay, any questions? so far on three clubs so the normal to scale applies apart from the extra first step response. Relay beta is allowed, epsilons are allowed because we've got an established asking bid sequence. Still, if opener bids the one step response in response to uh, ETA, now four clubs is gamma in clubs. It's not just natural saying, oh, okay, we're playing clubs. It is definitely gamma in clubs because we know that responder has a slam invitational hand. Okay, so if you've got both majors, what we recommend is actually not, not to use ETA unless you're prepared to take a chance on picking the right major. Um, but if you use three diamonds over three clubs, find out which major opener has and now bid four diamonds. That is beta according to the standard rules for beta and implicitly agree the major that opener has shown and because we've got the trump agreement and we've got the beta we can then now use epsilons so that's the method you'd use if you had a major two suitor over three clubs and slam interest
Okay. Last but not least. Okay, so I'll take you through these. Um, there are a few sort of portals for asking bids. So the first one is if it goes two no trumps, three clubs, and now opener rebids three diamonds, showing a maximum hand with both majors, or three hearts showing a lower range hand with both majors. Now, four clubs is gamma in hearts, and four diamonds is gamma in spades. And again, we've now got an established asking bid sequence, so relay beat is available over the response, and epsilons can follow. Um, If, however, it goes two no trumps, three diamonds, showing a preference for, for diamonds if uh, opener has both minors, um, and opener now bids three hearts, showing both majors. Again, four clubs and four diamonds, a gamma in hearts and spades, respectively. And as before, uh, asking bids have been established. Bearing in mind that Responder can be pretty strong and still bid three clubs or three diamonds over two no trumps. They may only come to life when opener shows a major two suitor rather than a minor two suitor. Okay, so the next situation is where Responder bids three hearts or three spades over two no trumps. So that's strongly invitational with that major and a minor. Um, there's no portals for asking bids in these secret circumstances because A, we're not guaranteed a fit. Um, because opener doesn't have to have a major. And unless we've got both minors we don't have to have a minor suit fit. Uh, we might if opener's got both minors, but not necessarily if they've got clubs. So there's no portals for asking bids where opener bids three hearts uh, or three spades. The other thing to bear in mind, as I've said there, is that if it does go two no trumps, three hearts, or two no trumps, three spades, that in itself is an inquiry. And that's the reason why we don't allow asking bids over those sequences. Uh, it's an inquiry asking <coughs> for specific information about um, openers, hand type, range, and so on. And again, you can look it up, but none of the sequences involve asking bids as such. Okay, next up is two no trumps, three no trumps. Okay, so if it goes two no trumps, three no trumps, most of the time, if opener has a club preempt or both minors, they are simply going to pass three no trumps. So the most common continuation over two no trumps, three no trumps, is uh, four clubs, which shows a major two suitor. And now we tend to rely on four diamonds, uh, which is a forcing inquiry, asking about range and shape and where the shortage is and so on. Um, uh, there's a beta ask defined in all of those sequences, but there are no trump asking bids as such. So it's quite easy to envisage a slam where opener has both majors, 
um, given that uh, responder is 16 plus balanced. Um, but we, apart from beta, we rely on relatively natural methods to get there, mainly just for lack of space, because we're at game level already, and uh, so we need to give uh, responder uh, the chance just to sign off in one major or or the other. Okay, any questions about continuations after two no trumps, three clubs, two no trumps, three diamonds, two no trumps, three hearts, two no trumps, three spades, and two no trumps, three no trumps? You may think it's odd, by the way, that the only sequences of those ones there, where we actually have asking bids, is the sequence where responder may have uh, the most limited type of hands. In other words, two no trumps, three clubs, or two no trumps, three diamonds. Those are actually the only sequences where, apart from beta, that we have asking bids and trump asking bids available. But that's partly for reasons of space. Um, in fact, it's almost entirely to do with reasons of space. Okay, if there's no questions on those first sequences, we're going to turn our attention to uh, the one where there are a few more portals for asking bids, Trump asking bids, and that's where it starts two no trumps, four clubs. Okay, so four clubs is unconditionally forcing on opener to show their hand type. Um, whereas three no trumps is not forcing and will very often be passed where uh, responder has, sorry, where opener has uh, both minors or clubs. After two no trumps, four clubs, opener has to show what kind of suit they've got and what colour. Sorry, did I say colour? That doesn't quite follow. Um, and what type? That's what I meant. Okay, so after two no trumps, four clubs. Okay, so if opener bids four diamonds, which shows uh, both majors, four hearts and four spades are just sign-offs. Um, because, of course, uh, uh, responder may have a hand that's primarily interested in the minors. Um, so we need to give them the opportunity just to sign off. That doesn't stop opener from continuing potentially, uh, but if it does, if it does go four clubs, four diamonds, four hearts, or four spades, then we know that probably responder doesn't have great support for either major. So they've probably got a hand that's mostly centered on the minors. But if uh, if responder, sorry, if opener does bid four diamonds, now four no trumps is gamma in hearts, and five clubs is gamma in spades, and as before, we've had gamma. If we have gamma, if we have any trump asking bid, then uh, uh, it normally follows that we're in an asking, an established asking bid sequence, especially if we get a positive response to the ask, and of course gamma. Any response is positive in the sense that the mere use of gamma agrees that suit as trumps. So relay beta applies, 
epsilons are available and so on and we just carry on as we would do in any other ASCII bid sequence. Okay, so that's when Oprah shows the majors. Uh, however, if they bid four hearts over four clubs, that's showing the minors. Um, and now the situation is reversed slightly. The two cheapest bids are still uh, the gammas and the immediate bids of the minor or either minor at the five level is um, just to play. So four spades is gamma in clubs, four no trumps is gamma in diamonds. And again, because we've used gamma, we've got an established asking bid sequence. And uh, so uh, sorry, I've lost track of what I was going to say. I'm so tired. <laughs> uh, yeah, four spades gamma in clubs, four no trumps gamma in diamonds. Um, and we got asking bids established. Um, okay. If, however, if, however, openers got long clubs, they've got a club preempt. So now it's just going to be a four no trump rebid over four clubs. There are no asking bids available here. Um, because obviously we don't have to have a fit. Uh, and so we can't we can't uh, give any portal for asking bids where openers just got a club preempt. Okay, nearly there. Okay, so this is a, a sort of slightly ancillary point that, um, which is actually the effect that the two no trump opening has on major suit sequences. Because the two no trump opening, if opener has both majors, it's exactly 5-5. Five, five. It can't be 6-5, it can't be 5-6, it must be exactly 5-5. Five, five. Uh, if opener uses two no trumps. It therefore follows that if opener opens one spade, particularly, or even one heart, one shape they cannot have is exactly 5-5 five, five in the majors, or they would open it two no trumps. So when the sequence goes one spade, one no trump, three hearts, opener must be exact, or at least 6-5, in uh, spades and hearts again because they must have at least five hearts otherwise they wouldn't jump shift at the three level over one no trump and similarly <coughs> um, they can't be five five or they would open uh, two no trumps so they must be six five and if they had five card spades and six card hearts they are easily going to be strong enough to open hearts and reverse into spades. So that does affect the minimum length, uh, the minimum length for uh, the gamma, and and that also means that where you have sequences like um, two no trumps, three clubs, three diamonds, uh, and responder now uses gamma in either major, that these are going to be length known gammas, not length unknown, because we know that opener is exactly 5-5. Five, five. Um, and going back to the one spade, one no trump, three heart sequences. Uh, so the minimum length for a gamma in spades in that sequence 
would be six cards and the minimum length for hearts would be five hearts okay anybody got any questions over what I've covered today has anybody got any questions on asking bids when we've opened an intermediate OCP opening Uh, just a quick aside, Sanya, you're absolutely uh, welcome. It's not a problem. Uh, Joe did one for me today. Um, it's just unfortunate that I've lost my ability to log in as Oliver C and then also log in as BBO IEC. I don't know why. I have asked BBO for some guidance on that and nothing's been forthcoming. Um, so, Sanya, please don't worry about it. I do understand. Um, Right. Uh, unfortunately, Sanya, you've just come in just as I'm about to finish. Uh, has anybody got any questions about asking bids over intermediate sequences? Um, right. If anybody gets a chance to ask BBO, or Sanya, or if you ask, if you get a chance to ask and you get a response, could you let me know, please? Because um, it's very annoying not being able to do it anymore. It has happened before now that it's dropped off, but they've always been able to restore it. So it sounds more like this is a deliberate change in policy. Um, but uh, if you do manage to get a response from BBO, uh, I'd be grateful for a heads up. OK, guys, um, as I said before, I'm afraid I'm absolutely blitzed. Um, I've only had about six hours sleep in the last 48 hours. Um, because I was up all yesterday and half of last night uh, because Naomi got admitted to hospital and uh, I'm up again at 6 o'clock in the morning uh, to go to work uh, so I'm just going to stop there I know it's three quarters of an hour early and we would normally have some practice hands um, but uh, I don't the sad truth is I don't actually have many practice hands um, prepared as a group for uh, asking bids after intermediate openings. I do have plenty, but they're all split up all over the place. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to call it a night there and head to bed. Um, and that will give me a chance of actually making it through an eight-hour shift tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, next. That, that is the end of the, the section of this series on asking bids. OK, so next week we start the last section, really, of the, uh, uh, the series, which is on competitive bidding in all its glories. And we actually kick off with defending against precision. And uh, obviously, quite a lot of the time, you guys are going to be playing against other pairs playing OCP. Um, and sometimes just against other players playing some other strong club system. Um, so uh, definitely worth coming and uh, hopefully we will have a few other people from uh, IAC along next week uh, who just want to know how to defend when they're playing against you guys. Uh, so normally it's a fairly well attended sequence uh, session, the next one on defending against precision. Um, so look forward to seeing you next Saturday. All right, guys, night all. Um, sorry about this today. I'm just so tired that I can hardly put two sentences together, as you'll have probably noticed tonight. So uh, I'll see you next week. Nah, she's okay. She's uh, said her breathing's just really bad. Um, she, uh, We took her to the doctors on uh, Friday morning, and he just packed her straight off to the hospital. I was at the hospital for him about 12 o'clock yesterday through till about half 11 um, at night and uh, and then got called back to the hospital um, because they were going to move Naomi which she objected violently to 
well not violently but uh, vociferously and got really upset so I ended up actually not getting to bed until about one o'clock in the morning um, anyway uh, she's okay now and hopefully she'll be home tomorrow sometime but maybe Monday but uh, I'll keep you in touch and let you next week no no it wasn't but um, anyway everything's fine and uh, I'll see you guys next week take care bye